And I know that it's true. Hebrews, we're going to start at chapter 2. Chapter 2. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, least at any time we should let them slip. Whoa! We should give earnest heed to the words that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. How far has, as Brother Doug was talking about, has the church in general slipped from the truth of God? Selectively reading the scripture, leaving out, making things liberal thoughts, denying the power of God, denying the virgin birth, denying the resurrection, denying that God, that Jesus was literally God. For if we if the word spoke by an angels were steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a recompense of reward, the angels that sin, even if God is going to punish the angels who were once holy, huh, what's he going to do with us? If he pun these were angels. These were, you know, things that we... Once in a while, catch a glimpse of and see how holy and, and one of the, and then these, some of these sinned, a third of them sinned and fell. And they have a reward. And the reward is not what we want. Uh, understand that hell itself was prepared for the devil, for Satan and his angels. It has not been prepared for man. God doesn't want us to go there. It's prepared for Satan and his angels. But if you go Satan's way, you get to go and join him in that place of eternal torment. Preachers don't want to preach this. They don't want to say that. They just want to say how nice you are. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? How are we to escape if we let it slide? How are we to escape? They say backsliding is not mentioned in the New Testament. Right there it is. If we let this slide, if we, if we compromise, if we become soft and fluffy about our religion and, then, and that everything's okay and that God does not give recompense for sin. And that we don't really need a savior. We can be most 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 of what's supposed to be Christianity is a works religion. They think they're going to be okay on their own. It's a truth that they preach a, another gospel. God also bearing them witnesses both with signs and wonders, with diverse miracles, and with the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His own will. The church is supposed to be full of signs and wonders. It's supposed to be full of miracles. It's supposed to be full of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are listed in Corinthians. Of tongues and interpretation of tongues and of prophecies and of, of healings and of discernment of spirits and, and of miracles. Most of the churches today, the people go in and they come out just the same as when they went in. They don't see a miracle. Nobody even talks about miracles. They take miracles and bottle them up in the past. Well, Jesus performed miracles, but not for today. Would God, as we approach this end time, when things are so bad, would he come and take away our gifts? No. No, what kind of God would that be? Pulled the plug on the church. Took the gifts away. We're supposed to be operating in these gifts. Of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. For unto the angels 
had he not put in subjection the world to come, therefore we speak. For one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou didst visit him? Just why would God want anything to do with us? We are so sinful. We come so short. And yet we are so chosen by God. God goes out and looks for those who he can do something with. Amen? But thou mayst him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of thy hand. Thou put all things in subjection under his feet for that he put all in subjection under him. Let it him let nothing that is put, not put under him, but we now see not yet all things put under him. Who? Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, was made a little lower than the angels. He came down in the form of a man, wrapped around the fullness of God. Colossians 2 9 says, Within him the fullness of the God has revealed. This man came to earth that he might reveal the fullness of God unto us, made himself step down from glory, and came down to be our Savior. Came down and died on a cross for us, that he might be subject unto the penalties for our sin. Amen? He might be subject to the penalty for our sin, made lower than the angels, for a time. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than angels for the suffering of death, crowned him with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became, became him of whom all things and who are all things in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. He came to bring many sons unto salvation. He come to draw the world unto him. He come to die for the whole world. He died for the whole world, but most people will not walk into what he has. Most people will not come unto him. Most people are going to try and make it on their own somehow. They're not going to become sons of the living God. Most of what is supposed to be Christianity, that's what it thinks is right, its own mind. It does not want to follow the principles of this Bible. It just simply wants to make it easy for people to be saved. They want to make some easy way in where you don't submit to God. being the captain of their salvation, perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctify and they that are sanctified are all of one, for which case he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He is not ashamed to call us brethren because he died for us, saying it will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church, which I sing praises unto thee. And what we see today are a lot of people, hundreds of them, I know 30 or 40 of them, that at one time were in fellowship with the saints. At one time were in a body of Christ. Were in, in God's house. But, oh, they got a hangnail or somebody said something to them and they're a little bit upset. And, they, you know, they, the pastor did something to them, they thought, or, or this or that or the other thing. And, and so the next thing you know, that they, they become an island unto themselves. They think that, you know, they don't need the church that was ordained of God. They don't need it. A lot of them uh, are, uh, think they're ministers. A lot of them think they're ministers and that they, they don't need the, the uh, apostolic headship that God ordained. That they can just go about and, you know, and, and pray for people. And people come to them, they can drive devils out of them and all this stuff. And they, they think they're really something and they're not in God's church. 
And I, I studied this thing on that. I went to Hebrews 10, 23, forsake not assemble thyselves together. It has not been God's order for people to be Christians that are just floating around without being in God's fellowship. It's just not the way it's supposed to be. And so when you get out of God's order, then you're out of his grace. He says, the church, the church, really the word that is called church there, it, it actually translates more correctly, assembly. That means something that comes together. That means that you get up in the morning and you go to God's house. The church literally means assembly. What does it mean to assemble? It means to come together. People say, well, I don't need to go to the assembly. I can get everything I need off TV. There are more people who think they're Christians that are just simply watching some program on TV. And you will get every different kind of thought and every different kind of doctrine that might possibly come along off of TV. If you don't get the false doctrine off TD, TV, in this day and age, you will get it off the internet. There'll be somebody come on there and tell you you don't need to be in the church. Just send your money to them. Support their ministry. And watch them on TV and you're all set. That is not assembling. God did not say it to assemble around a boob tube of some sort, whether it be TV or internet. He said to assemble with the saints for the building up of your faith. People are wandering around without headship, without knowledge, without being properly trained in the word of God. Listen to every whim of doctrine that might come along. There are people watching this TV program that think if you watch me once a week, you're set. You're not set. You're informed a little bit, but you need to assemble yourselves together in a house that preaches the truth of Jesus Christ and not just wander about aimlessly. Swallowing up everything that comes along. Saying, oh, we hear there's someone over there. We hear there's someone over here. Running to and fro. Getting a blessing and an anointing and a something from everything that might exist. Some of them might be of God and many of them are not. Saying, I will clear thy name unto thy brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praises unto thee. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praises unto thee. I sing a song with the TV. I do my praising on the internet. It said in the midst of the assembly. It, the, the wild thing about Hebrews 10.23 is it leads straight from not being assembled together unto a fearful thing to face the living God. That nothing's left but the fiery expectation of the judgment that is to come. And again I'll put my trust in him and again behold I am the child uh, I am the children of God hath given me for as much there as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood also make himself likewise part of the same that though through death he may destroy him that hath the power of death that is the devil. If we partake of him through the flesh and the blood they're supposed to come into the assembly and receive the, the, the communion, receive the symbols of his flesh and of his blood that you might be able to be enriched by the supernatural spiritual presence of God in that and you think you're going to get it off TV or the internet. As I view 
these television ministries and, and, and find some that are worthwhile and something that, is, that might build up my faith, I find others that are absolutely destroying the kingdom of God. Going from every direction that is not God. Going from every direction that is not God. Some being extremely liberal. Saying, say a little prayer and you're set for life. Saying that you're okay. Other ones just say, live nice. Be a good guy. Don't beat up your neighbor. Don't beat your wife too much and you'll be okay. And other ones taking them back into Old Testament legalism. And telling them that they have to do this and do that. And do this. When I get the next chapter, Hebrews will really get into this. Do this and do that. And that, that you'll climb your way to heaven by climbing a ladder of doing particular things. Religious rites. Feast days. And, and, and Sabbath days. And, and, and <laughs> washing of pots. Jesus talked about it. And it goes on and on and on into eternity that way. That they're drawn by every strange thing that comes out. Not talking about your relationship with Christ. Not talking about giving your life over. Not talking about you dying to self. But somehow yourself will attain by climbing these rungs. It's like a Holy Ghost escalator. The ladder you get on and the steps that you're climbing are not being run by yourself, but they're being run by the escalator. That's a much better analogy. Remember, in the Vatican, there's a, a set of steps. And a priest and monks and all that sort of stuff make pilgrimages pilgrimages over to there. And uh, they climb up these steps. Oh Lord, this just is religion. Just, just, just They climb up these steps and they kneel down on each step and they pray. And as they go up each step, they, they take themselves, that they believe each step that they go up and kneel down and pray and ask God that they have a, a, a 10,000 years of purgatory dissolved for each step that they climb. And there's a lot of steps. I don't know how many. They just keep going up that. going up. That's where Martin Luther actually come to the revelation that there's something wrong. He's climbing them steps till his knees are bloody. And he says there's got to be something different than this to get to God. You just can't climb up the steps. So it really works like a Holy Ghost escalator. You get on and he empowers the step. And he takes you into his presence by his power. He cleans the filth out of your life. By his power, he's the one that runs the, uh, one of the songs we sang there was talking about get the dross out of the gold. He's the one that turns up the heat that boils it out of you. Sometimes it's not real comfortable to be purged. Amen? Sometimes you don't like to get rid of the dross. Sometimes you like your sin. Sometimes you're kind of in love with it. You don't want to get rid of it, but he will put the, he'll turn up the, He'll turn up that propane torch <laughs> till he brings it out. Amen? To deliver you from the power of the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him in the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. He didn't take on the nature of an angel. There you go, Jehovah Witness. <laughs> He's not Michael says so right there. He said this God, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Not anything was made without Him, and all things were made by Him and for Him. You were made for Him. He made you and you made him for his use. Hallelujah. He didn't take on the nature of an angel. But he took this glory and he wrapped it in flesh. 
He wrapped it in red clay. Because that's what you are. If Abraham was made out of red clay, he's made out of red clay. Adamna means red earth. That's an amazing thing about how we know the Garden of Eden story is true. I've studied so many religions that would make your head spin. And 90 some percent of them say they were made out of red dirt. So you can tell that it all goes back to the same and, and, and it all goes back to the same truths and, and every one of these religions that have, have wandered away from the truth has a no one. Every one of them has a flood. We know that this thing is true because all the other religions have precepts from it, but they've been defiled by men moving away from it, as it says in the first chapter of Romans, and worshiping the creator instead of the creation itself. There's one Hindu god that, that they decided that a man got cut in half or something like that, and they put an elephant head on him, and so that's God. It's a man's legs and an elephant's head. Being moved away from the truth. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on the nature angels, but he took on himself the seed of Abraham. They've been under bondage. You understand, people are religious bondage. People are under bondage all the time. It's always something that you've got to do. It's always one more step you've got to climb. It's always one more thing you've got to do. One more fiery hoop you must jump through. One more rat that you must... Oh, my God. You know, over there in Hindu religion, they, they have a big temple full of rats, and they go in there and pray to the rats. Rats everywhere. Rats just crawling and screaming. They have snake temples and rat temples and... In all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. In the temple, in the, in the Old Testament temple, the high priest, the high priest would go in and you'd go up to him and you'd done something bad. Anybody ever do anything bad? And so you'd grab a, let's pretend this horn is, is the whole lamb. This is the whole lamb. Or, or a pigeon, or a dove, or some other poor little critter. And, and you would take this to the high priest and say, here, I have sinned. And the high priest would take this thing, whatever it was, and he'd kill it. And then he'd throw some of the blood on the altar. And that blood would be a recompense for your sin. But it only was until you did it again. Then you had to go out and get another pigeon, or another lamb, or another ram, or another whatever the prescribed things was. And you dragged that up to the priest and he took that to replace your sin with the death of that animal. And this went on forever and ever. So it left these people in a bondage. Every time you messed up, you had to go out and get a critter. Every time you, then you had to take the right critter to the priest. And the priest would take that and he would slaughter that critter. And he would throw it on the altar for you. Finally, oh Lord. After all these years of this being a type of Christ himself... The high priest himself took and made himself the sacrifice. So that you might not have to take a animal after animal after animal after animal and after animal and then pour out blood after blood after blood that it came running off that altar down there like a river. But the high priest himself 
who is Yahshua Messiah, allowed himself to be nailed to a cross, shed his blood on that altar, so that it's over. To, to be in Christ today, you don't have to go down to the goat salesman and buy a goat. You don't have to go down to the lamb salesman and buy a lamb. You don't have to sit out here in my yard with a net and catch one of them pigeons that come down here. One of them doves. You don't have to go out to Farmer Joe's and, and buy a steer and bring it in. But have it sacrificed because you'd sin big time. A steer. A bull ox. That's a big sin. The blood of Jesus, which the church doesn't want to talk about anymore. It came. He died. He shed his blood on the altar one time for all the sin that there ever was in the world. For all the sin in the past and all the sin in the future and all the sin in the present on that day. He bore your sin. The sin of every man, every woman, every child. From eternity past to eternity future. That you might be justified through his perfect sacrifice. So that you didn't have to carry this stuff to the altar anymore. So that you didn't have to work for your salvation. But he would work through you. I, I preach this all the time. It's so hard for people to get. Yeah, you need to live holy. He's Holy Spirit enables you to live holy. When you repent, change your mind. Decide that you can't make it on your own. Walk in the principles that he set forth. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, for the mission of your sin. And you shall, you shall, you shall, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That that gift of God might enable you to walk above. Not by your strength, but by his strength above. Your sinful nature, for it has died within Romans 6, 2 says, Know ye not that when you were baptized into Jesus Christ that you entered into his death and when you rose, you rose into his resurrection. Resurrection life. Available to whoever will allow as God calls them. Allow the call of God to bring them to repentance. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.